We're nearly done. All we're going to do now is add the animated title between the boy and the background. So deselect all the layers. Make sure your time indicator is at the beginning. Choose layer, new, and then text. And I want you to, and you can see there's a new text layer. Type your name. I'm going to type Parazine. Winter Blues. So your, it should be whatever your name is and then Winter Blues. Select all the text. And then in the composite, uh, we're going to go over here to your text and select, let's see if we have what they're wanting us to do, Myriad, Myriad Pro, and then for the font style, semi bold, the font size going to be 300. From the kerning menu, we're going to change this to optical. Fill color needs to be white. Select black for the stroke color. Make sure the stroke width is one pixel. And stroke overfill is selected right here. Select the text layer in the timeline panel to deselect the text. Press T and that reveals the opacity. Change the opacity to 40%. Click the effects and presets tab to open that panel. And then we're going to, and mine froze. Of course it did. Type glow, G L O W. Double click the one under stylize. That's the one that we're going to do. The text gains some texture. The default settings that you have are fine. Drag the winter blues layer in the timeline down to position it between the boy.move and the background layers. So we're just going to drag this down between these two. Then move the current timeline indicator to the beginning if it's not already there. So we're going to animate the text so that it moves left behind the boy while he crosses to the right of the frame. So with that layer selected, press P. And that reveals its position property. Change the position to 1925 and 540. Click the stopwatch icon. That sets the position property to sets a keyframe. And the text you can see moved off screen so it's not visible when the movie begins. Move the current time indicator to 301. 301. That takes you to the end. Change the position to minus 1990. The text moves to the left. And After Effects creates a keyframe. Deselect all layers in the timeline panel. Move the current time indicator to the beginning of the time ruler. Press the space bar to preview the clip. It's not real smooth the first time it goes through.
go. That's what it should look like. So you can press the space bar after you've watched it. Click File, and then Save to save your work. We are now going to render our movie to complete it. So I want you to click File, Export, Add to Render Queue. In the Render Queue panel, click the words Best Settings. In the dialog box, choose half from the resolution pop-up menu. Change that to half. Make sure use comps frame rate is selected right here. And then click OK. Click the blue text next to output mode right here. Then at the bottom of the output module settings dialog box, choose audio output off and then click OK. So right here, audio output off. Click OK. Click the blue text next to output 2 and go to wherever you're saving everything. I have an After Effects Lesson 9. That's where mine is. And then click Save. Click Render. When your project has rendered, save and close it. So let's click File and Save. Let me go look to see how large that file is. So here's my file that I rendered. It's 139,000. I'm not sure if that's going to be able to be submitted. If it's not, if it's too large to be submitted, what you'll do is you will, you can either render it in a different format that decreases that, or you can call me over to your desk and show me this file and then play it for me. All right, so congratulations. You've separated a foreground object from the background, including tricky details, modified the background, animated some text to complete the movie.